Hi, and welcome to Installing Scheme for Max on Max for Live. My name's Ian Duncan, and I am the author of Scheme for Max, an extension to Max that lets you script Max and Ableton Live through Max for Live in S7 Scheme. In this video, I'm going to cover getting the package installed and checking that it's working specifically for people who are using Max for Live but don't necessarily own or have experience with regular Max. All right, so the first thing to know is that Scheme for Max is a Max package. Uh, it's not in the package manager at this point. I plan on that in the future. So you do need to download the package and put it into your Max packages directory. So the first thing you'll do is go to the GitHub page. This is the home page for now for Scheme for Max. If you scroll down, it shows you the current readme, which will give you the project status and what the latest news is and um, what the latest release is. Then over on the right, a lot of people miss this, there is a releases area, okay? You need to go to releases which in the URL is just scheme for max slash releases and download the latest release. It's available as a tar or a zip for whatever, whichever one you prefer. Doesn't matter. They contain the same things. And each one contains the builds for Intel Mac, M1 Mac, and Win64. Um, as of the most recent version of the Max SDK, the standard projects don't build for Win32 anymore. So it's just Windows 64. Okay, so you download that tarball or zip file. And the next thing you need to do is put that into your Max packages directory. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky if you only own Ableton Live. So when you buy Max for Live or when you get Ableton Live Suite, you have a license for using Max within Ableton Live. And that's all you need to run a scheme for Max. Uh, but it's not necessarily obvious where the package directory is if you are using the bundled version that came with Ableton Live. So what I would recommend is you should download and install standalone Max, and then you, you should switch your Ableton installation over to use that. And that's going to make your life a lot easier when you're learning how to use Scheme for Max as well. Um, so one of the things that Cycling74 does, which is uh, really great, is they provide an unlimited demo mode of Max. If you download it and you start running it, you can do everything in there, but you can't save. Um, so that makes troubleshooting installation as well as uh, learning scheme for Max a lot simpler because we don't need to be able to save those patches to take advantage of it. Okay, but let's walk through the installation process now um, both ways. Okay, so... I'm going to pull up my finder window and in here, put it somewhere visible. This is, if you look at the bottom, my Max 8 packages directory. If you have a standalone Max install on a Mac, that's going to live in your user documents, Max 8, and then packages. Uh, if you are on Windows, that's going to be somewhere else and I got a picture from Andre. Andre, thank you for making that. He shows that if you install standalone Macs on Windows, the directory is program files, cycling 74, Max 8. Okay, that's the directory of Max. And then your packages directory will be right underneath that. So on his machine, it'll go program files, cycling 74, Max 8, packages. Once you download the standalone version of Max, you need to go to Ableton Live's preferences and tell it where that is, which one to use. Okay, so it's over in uh, files. It's under Max application. And you can either check use bundled version or you can check browse and pick one. So for example, um, well, I have to restart to do that. So I have browsed to my Max location. I just find it here. There it is, Max app, and I choose it. And now it says applications max.app. So that's the location where Max is. And this is where it gets a little confusing. Where your package directory is doesn't necessarily map to that. That's just saying I'm using the downloaded Max version. 
when you use Max on a Mac, it creates a documents Max 8 directory for you. And that's where the packages go. So if you want to do this without installing, um, sorry, wrong finder window there. If you want to do this without installing the uh, standalone Max, you're going to need to do a little bit of hunting and figure out where the packages directory is on your system. And uh, if you want to make comments on the bottom of the video to let people know where that is, that would be super helpful. So let's assume you found your packages directory. You're going to uncompress the zip file or tarball that you downloaded and stick it in there. And you can see in this package directory, I've got a few different packages installed, Bach, Link, and my own scheme for Max. And then in scheme for Max, there's a directory called extensions. And this is where the actual external lives. So one of these is for Windows, one of these is for Mac. Okay, so that's very important to know because you're gonna need to know where that is for some authorization steps in a moment. And then in addition, there's an extras folder. This has critical scheme files. It's important that those are there and you don't delete them as well. And then there are examples that you can try out. So let's assume you've put that there. And now we're going to open Max and see whether it worked. All right, so um, you'll want to close everything down and reopen it because when new externals are detected and loaded, they, they do it on startup. All right, so let's pretend that I've done that. And then I'm going to go and make a Max MIDI effect and I'm going to put it into edit mode. And when I put it into edit mode, I get a Max window and you can now see I'm running Max. So the next thing I'm going to do is try making a scheme for Max object to see if it worked. Actually, I don't even need to do that. I can take a look at the console and I'll have to restart Max. It's not doing what I expected. Let's close Max and restart so I can show you the message. Okay, we're waiting for the editor to open. Let's open. There we go. When you start up Max and it detects Scheme for Max, it should spit out this little message here, Scheme for Max 0.4.0, and that means it loaded the extension on startup. So that's the first good sign. So the next thing we're going to do is make a Scheme for Max object. So that's S for M and then just space, not the dot REPL one. Unfortunately, Max recently changed how autocomplete works. It's a bit annoying now, uh, if anybody hears this from cycling. All right, I've made the object and I got a message S for M initialized. That means everything worked fine. You could get a couple of errors. Um, you could have the object not be found, in which case you also wouldn't see this message. And that means that it's not finding your package. You could also get a message that a scheme file has been not found, and that means something's wrong with your package installation. If you get S4M initialized, you are okay. Another way to check this is to take a look at the Max Package Manager. Now, even though Scheme for Max is not in the Package Manager, it shows up as a locally installed package. So you go to here, locally installed packages, there is Scheme for Max, and if I click Launch, I should open a new Max window with the Scheme for Max help. All right, so there's the Scheme for Max help. All right, that means that Scheme for Max was found. Now the help spits a whole bunch of things out on the console, so don't, don't worry about that. The next step is making sure that your code is found, and that is also a common source of problems. So the way we put a program into Scheme for Max is we put it in as the uh, first argument. So I'm going to say hello world.scm. Actually, I'll, I'll zoom in for people because I know this is Scheme Scheme for Max. I mean, not Scheme for Max. Max for Live opens with Max in very small mode. Okay, so I've got hello world.scm and I've got an error message over in the console. It says hello world.scm not found, and then it initialized. So the object initialized, but it did not load my program. So the way this works is Scheme for Max looks in your Max file preferences. And to get at your Max file preferences, you need to open Max. So you're going to get there by editing a Max for Live device. 
or you can do this by starting standalone Max. So that's up in, oh, I got it right first time, options. It's under file preferences. And what you do is put paths in here and then you can also indicate whether you would like Max to scan the subfolders. So in this case, I'm going to add a path where I've put some code. So under Max8, I made a code directory and I put hello world.scm in there. So I'm going to add code to my path. Now that's done, you don't have to save or anything, it just does it, all right? And this won't take effect until I recreate the object. So just editing the box is enough to do that. Excellent, it loaded. We now see hello.scm loading. Now that's not something that happens automatically. That was the first line of my program. So that's just a habit I have uh, to make it a lot easier to figure out whether things are working. You can put a post as the first line of your program. Then I define a function. I'm defining uh, fbang. So let's see whether that works. We'll put a bang into here. We'll bang it. There we go. Hello world. So our program did execute. And then finally, you can always go and look at the help to figure out how things work. All right. Now, what if this doesn't work? The Max and Ableton integration is really quite incredible from a software engineering perspective. It's very impressive, but it doesn't always work perfectly. So if something goes wrong between Max and Live, one of the problems is sometimes it just kind of hangs. So you might go into edit mode and no window opens or it opens and it hits an error and the error box is out of view and you can't find it and you don't know why it didn't work or nothing's happening. So there's a few gotchas here. Uh, one of the ones that will get you is the audio engine needs to be on for Scheme for Max to run. That's because it runs by default in the high priority thread and that thread is not active if the audio engine is off. So if you're able to make your object and it's just not responsive, um, check that. If you're trying to edit a device and you get that hangy behavior I'm telling you about, it is possible that you've banged into authorization issues for, you know, check for trust this developer and all that nonsense. Um, and that stuff, I don't know how we all manage to keep on top of it. What might help you out is to close Ableton entirely and then open the patches, some of the examples or the external directly in Max. And sometimes on a couple of my installs, what I had to do to make that work was to go to the extensions and either, you know, get info and allow it or try and open it with Max. And that doesn't really work. <laughs> it won't open an extension with Max, but the first time you're debugging those security issues, it will give you the little pop-up that says, do you want to trust this developer? In which case you can say yes. And then after that, you should be able to open Max and open, uh, put the external into one of your objects. Um, so I'll just show you what opening Max looks like. If I open plain old Max, I can just make a new patcher. You get this blank patcher. You should get the little message about uh, SFRAM initialized the first time you open it. And then you should be able to just make objects there. If you're in demo mode, you're going to see a little green message on the top saying that saving is disabled. But other than that, um, that's really all there is to it. And the file preferences are the same, whether you're on uh, doing this through Ableton Live or um, through standalone Max. Okay, so that should get you going for installing. Um, what would be really helpful is if you watch this and you are installing it into a Ableton Live installation with the bundled Max, if you can share in the comments where you found your packages directory and whether that worked for you, that would be wonderful. And also if you can share what operating system you use and what you had to do to get the extension trusted for your operating system. And just uh, also one final point is that if you're doing that, um, 
one of these is for Mac and one of these is for uh, Windows. So you, you'll need to make sure you uh, authorize the correct one. All right, that should give you everything you need to know to get going. And if you have any problems and this has not answered them, please go and make a post on the forum, which is here. Oh, come on, Windows. Okay, there we go. There's a Scheme for Macs online forum with an installation thread where I will help you with any installation issues and where other people can um, share their experiences on getting it working. All right, I hope that gets you going.